What are minifans? In this project, I make some modular magnetized walls. I initially planned on using chipboard for the main body, but then decided it was going to use way too much. So in the end, I used plain old cardboard and cardstock for the bulk. So it was nice and cheap. As always, if you like anything in the vid, like and subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. I also have a Patreon up and running if you really want to support me. The link's down in the description, along with links to my most used crafting materials. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to building. <laughs> To begin, I've done this already, but I've cut all the cardboard into rectangles, and they're 6 centimeters high, and in length, they're 14.4, because I'm using 3 mil chipboard, two end pieces, so I want the whole thing to be 15 centimeters in length. And I've done two cardboard sections for each wall. Then the chipboard ends are 5 centimeters by 7 centimeters, and then I cut the corners off one and then use that as a template and cut the corners off all the rest. With all that done, I start assembling the cardboard wall sections. And I'm using these little bits of chipboard just to bulk it out. So I want a space inside so the wall's a bit thicker. So I'm using two little layers of the 3 mil chipboard. And I glue these in with PVA glue the top on and then line it up using something straight so I'm just using these little wooden blocks. Now of course because the wall sections are made of cardboard you're going to see those ridges if you just leave it like this. So I'm just going to cover it all with cardstock. So I've just cut out same dimensions as the cardboard, loads of rectangles of just card, and then I glue these on with PVA and put a weight on top, a light weight on top, just to make sure it doesn't warp. At the bottom of the walls, I want an extra section. So I've cut a 1.5 centimeter high strip of uh, cardboard. So this is going to get glued on. And then to cover this, I want a piece of cardboard. I want it kind of angled and then a bit of trim. So what I've done, I've got the width of that wall or the length of that wall. And then I've done three lines. So I've done 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1.5. And then I score between the 0.5 centimeter lines and then cut at the bottom of 1.5. So this then gets bent at sort of an angle, you can see in the vid. And then after this, I just glue this all together with PVA. For the roof of these wall sections, I'm just using cardstock. So I've cut um, a section of card the same length as the wall, and then the wall's 1.5 centimeters wide. But then I want half centimeter trim either side. So I've done lines on this card: half centimeter, 1.5, half centimeter, and then repeat. Then I score along the two lines next to the 1.5 centimeter section. Bend those sections down, glue it on top with PVA. Next up, I add 5mm trim to either side of both sides of the wall, and I just glue this on with PVA. I want to magnetize these wall sections now. So the, the chipboard end sections, I find the middle, draw a line, and then do a dot two centimeters down from the top, one centimeter up. And then I drill through with my pin vise, and then I play around. I use like a nail file to clean it up and 
cocktail sticks and stuff to get it all out. And then stick a magnet in there, little mini magnet, and then super glue it in. So I do this twice on each end section. Does take a while, but definitely useful. I want to add a little more detail on the top of the wall sections. So I've made some marks centimeter in and then five centimeters drawn lines, same both sides. And then I have 1.5 by one centimeter rectangles of chipboard, which then get PVA glued on those lines. In between those chipboard rectangles we've just glued on, we do a section of cable tie and then two sections of barbecue skewer. And I just cut one to length and then use that as a template to cut the rest. I don't want to measure each one individually. Next up, I add some extra bits of trim. So it's five mil wide card again, but cut at an angle each side. They're about two centimeters long. I didn't actually measure these. Um, I just cut one and then used it as a template. So these just get glued on in various locations just with PVA. Assembly time. So I'm now gluing the end pieces onto the main wall sections and I just use hot glue for this and I I use the cutting mat uh, lines to, to um, line this all up and I just put the end piece against a flat sided box, hot glue the end of the wall section and whack it on and then repeat. On to details. I don't record everything I do here, but the basis is just using various sections of straw and pipe and just glue these on to different sides of the walls. I have this bendy sort of um, ridged pipe as well, which I cut in half and use a section of that. And this is all just glued on with super glue. For one wall section, I add some of that kid's, you know, the toy pipe, but the the sort of bent piece, the right angle piece, I want this to be flush to the floor, which means it's going to be at an angle. So I have to sand this down um, using sandpaper, coarse sandpaper, and then I use the nail file to sort of buff it all and make sure there's no mold lines. And then just glue this on with super glue again. Here's a quick view of all the finished wall sections. One of the ones with the black ridged pipe, I used super glue and baking soda to sort of make a rusty texture around the edge and to strengthen that bond. So then anyway, after this, I Mod Podge it all and then spray prime it black. Painting time. We again start off with a pretty heavy dry brush of silver. Then for the main wall sections, we go in with a, a sort of darkish red and it's quite watered down and I don't go up to all the edges. I leave it kind of scratchy with some of the silver showing through in different places. I have to do several coats of this. We 
We then do most of the pipe sections with a light blue and again we have to do a couple of coats of this. The ridged pipes, I paint those black. Even though they started off as black and I've now gotten to silver, we go back to black. I then dry brush some white onto the blue pipe sections, just along a sort of line, so where the light would hit. Then I give the black ridged pipes a dry brush of grey and then a very light dry brush of white. Washing time. Using my black wash, homemade black wash, black paint, water, drop of dish soap. I slather this on all over the wall sections and then dab off some of the red and blue blue parts. After that wash has dried, I mask off a few sort of lines on some of the walls and some of the pipes and then sponge on white. I then mix up some sort of rusty texture paint, so it's just burnt umber, bit of um, baking soda and some very fine sand. Mix it up, dab it on with an old brush. After that texture paint has dried, I sponge on some burnt umber around those areas and then some on some of the pipes just to make them look a bit dirtier. After that's dried, I then sponge on some orange on some of those rust sections. Then using my homemade brown wash, I do some staining, mainly around those rust sections, but in various other locations as well. As a final, final part, I do some sort of oil stains coming down from various places using just a watered down black paint. And that's the project complete. Here's some photos of the final finished pieces. I hope you enjoy the vid. And there's more to come. I will do some connectors and then some door sections as well. Alrighty, that's it for now. See you in the next vid. Cheers for now.